You know what's good for the PC community? Some stiff competition. Now the Intel and AMD fight is getting fierce and Intel pulled a 200 IQ play and waited for the red team to show their hand before whipping out their very own 13th gen processors and came up guns ablazing by not only pricing these lower but also supporting DDR4 memory. What? I thought they were supposed to be the kaiju to the red team's Ultraman. Now it's more like Godzilla vs Kong and you cannot tell who is the good guy or the bad guy. Anyways, today we're gonna find out three main things. Number one, will Intel 13th Gen take the crown from Ryzen 7000 series in terms of gaming and also productivity? Number two, is the new Z790 chipset a necessary upgrade or should you just stick to Z690? And number three, should you upgrade to DDR5 memory? Let's get processing. And in case it's not obvious enough, today we are checking out the i9-13900K and the i7-13700K. So recently, AMD launched the new Ryzen 7000 series processors and while they definitely had a good showing, a lot of you are complaining about the platform change and the unavoidable upgrade to DDR5. Actually, something similar happened last year with Intel 12th Gen, except they helped soften the blow a little by allowing us to save a few bucks with the support of DDR4 memory right out of the box and it seems like their decision to just rip off the bandaid a little earlier in terms of a platform change uh, has prepared them a little better for today's showdown. For context, with the new GPUs launching recently, it seems like building a new PC is not getting any cheaper if you care about the newest tech. So anyone who is offering a better value proposition in such a crucial time could potentially gain back or gain more market share. So let's get straight into it, shall we? So compared to last gen which is 12th gen, Intel has brought out some big guns by improving on their Intel 7 manufacturing process which basically number one, doubled the efficiency or e-cores as seen with the Intel i7-13700K uh, and the i9-13900K. Number two, boosted up clock speeds like, whoa, 5.8 GHz P-cores turbo on that i9, wow, neat or not all. And number three, they have also packed in more cash across the board. Another notable upgrade is of course the support for faster DDR5 memory from 4800 to 5600 mega transfer per second or MT per second, uh, which can go up to 7200 mega transfer per second or MT per second with XMP. I'm going to test how that actually impacts gaming and also content creation workloads uh, when I get my hands on those crazy RAM kits. Uh, so do stay tuned if you're interested to find out more. Something that really got me excited when I first read the press release was definitely the price on these new CPUs. I was genuinely surprised to see that uh, Intel priced their flagship i9-3900K $40 cheaper than the Ryzen 9 7950X. The i7 however is $50 pricier than the Ryzen 7 but still $100 cheaper than the Ryzen 9 7900X. Now along with this new gen of CPUs also come the brand new Intel Z790 chipset that still had the same LGA 1700 socket. There's honestly not much of an improvement over Z690 except for that extra 20 gigabits per second USB 3 port as well as the increased PCIe lanes which most people might not care about unless you're running multiple high-end GPUs and saturating your lanes with a lot of high-speed storage. It would be a shame if you had to buy them expensive new motherboards just to use Intel 13th gen CPUs, right? Well, you don't have to, so no shame on you. A little birdie, actually a lot of little little birdies, uh, came and tell me that consumers are actually pairing these new CPUs with 600 series motherboards with DDR4 memory to save a few bucks. Of course, don't forget to upgrade your BIOS if you're going to do that. But of course, for our test bench, we're gonna go balls to the walls because we're all balling bangsawans here in Mob House. Let's take a slight detour and talk about our ROG Maximus Z790 Hero motherboard which has a 20 plus 1 phase power design to ensure stable power delivery to them power hungry 13th gen processors for more overclocking headroom in case you decide to disable power limits and unleash the beast. Them beefy heat sinks will also keep things cool during our benchmarking. I mean VRM temps barely hit 60 Celsius. And while this is a gaming motherboard, content creators can still enjoy uh, the 5M two slots, two of which are actually included with the external Hyper uh, M.2 add-in card and the abundance of connectivity options. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. One super tiny but super underrated feature for me would be their Q latch and Q release so that your M.2 screws can stop disappearing. 
But of course, all these bangsawanness will come with a bangsawan price tag of hashtag cheap buy 3489 ringgit. As for the rest of the test bench, we strapped in an RTX 4090 to avoid any GPU bottleneck and fitted in some brand new 6400 DDR5 Kingston Fury Renegade memory as well as Fury Renegade PCIe 4 SSD. Also, we used the same Corsair AIO cooler as well as PSU to make sure that things are kept as fair as possible. Now let's take a look at the numbers and we're going to kick things off with gaming benchmarks starting with 3D Mark tests. In TimeSpy and TimeSpy Extreme, it seems like the Intel processors have a giant advantage. But these scores are nothing like what is reflected in real gaming benchmarks. So I think it might just be a case of TimeSpy doesn't like Team Red very much. Firestrike scores are more reasonable in terms of scaling, with the i9 taking a 14% lead in 1080p over the 7950X and 11% lead in 1440p. Even the i7 13700K beats both the Ryzen 9 7900X and the Ryzen 7 7700X by 6.5 to 8%. Moving on to actual games, we noticed a similar pattern. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 13900K is 9% faster than the 7950X and the i7 beat both the 7900X and 7700X by 6% and 8% respectively. The same can be observed with Far Cry 6 and Cyberpunk 2077, but the performance gap widened to the double digits in F122. One thing to note is how the Ryzen processor's FPS doesn't seem to be that far apart across most games we tested. Horizon Zero Dawn was an outlier where the Ryzen processors took a 21-23% to lead over the Intel processors. I suspect that we could expect these kind of scores mostly from games that are ported over from consoles like the PS4 or PS5. For those who are very extra and still care about competitive titles with high-end processors like these, uh, these are the Valorant scores and I'm gonna repeat myself once more. With games like this, it really doesn't matter which team you go. Overall, it's definitely a win for Intel in terms of gaming. Though I must say that if gaming is your thing, the i7 is the much better choice over the i9 at a lower cost in terms of money and also power draw. Next, we have productivity benchmarks. Cinebench got me wiping my glasses a few times and squinting non-stop, although my eyes are already quite small. I mean, just look at that 45% lead on that i7 13700K over the Ryzen 7 in multi-core score. Wait, what? Otherwise, it seems like the Intel processors are pretty much neck in neck with Team Red. So it seems like this time, Intel is going for the productivity crown as well. 7-Zip saw the Ryzen 9 7950X retake the crown, but the Ryzen 7 is still lacking by a good 15% behind the i7. In Photoshop, the i7 again took a 12% lead over the Ryzen 7. Otherwise, it's pretty much neck in neck. Uh, again, it's the same with After Effects. However, things took an interesting turn in Premiere Pro where we saw the Ryzen 9 7950X winning it for the Team Red. That is repeated in Resolve as well. Though the i7 managed to beat the Ryzen 9 7900X and the 7700X by 13% and 10% respectively. Looking at 3D benchmarks, while the i9 still lost to the Red Team's flagship, the i7 absolutely destroys the Ryzen 7 in both Blender and V-Ray CPU scores. I'll say this, for content creators, if you want the absolute best, the Ryzen 9 7950X is still going to have a tiny advantage. But given the value proposition, the i9 is not looking that bad either for productivity tasks. And if you want the best value as a content creator, then the i7 13700K is a clear winner. For those who are curious if they should get DDR5 RAM when they are buying one of these 13 gen CPUs or sticking to DDR4, here's a quick rundown. You're gonna lose less than 5% with the i9 and less than 3% with the i7 in heavier tasks as seen with Cinebench. The impact is much more noticeable on realistic workloads like gaming as seen with our Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Cyberpunk 2077 scores, as well as content creation tasks like Premiere Pro. You're gonna lose up to about 15%. If you really want to fully utilize these new CPUs, going DDR5 is definitely encouraged. If not, going DDR4 is still fine, I guess. Finally, we're gonna talk about power and thermals. Okay, this is where I feel that Intel has gotten a little 
competitive, shall we say, as in they just want to be the hottest base in the room. Not only did we see our i9 and i7 peak at 100 Celsius while stress testing them with ADA64, which is, to be honest, not very realistic loads, they also got pushed to 95 Celsius plus while gaming all while using a 360mm AIO cooler from a reputable brand like Corsair. I suggest lowering power limits if you worry about temps, uh, but again, to be honest, this is just a design with these CPUs and also most modern CPUs. If you have the thermal headroom, they're just gonna go for it. Looking at power draw, while I didn't pull them 300 watt numbers like Gamer Nexus, we still saw a whopping 277 watt on the i9. In comparison, Team Red seems a little tame now. My Bangsawan 2 cents is that if you want to pair these CPUs with something like the RTX 4090, I'd go with a 1000 watt PSU to be sure. If not, just lower your power limit and then, you know, use a 850 watt PSU and that should still be fine. But here are some thoughts from me to wrap things up. For flagship chasing bangsawans like me, especially if you care more about multi-threaded workloads, Intel is offering us the i9-13900K that goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ryzen 9 7950X at a slightly lower cost. Number two, for pure gaming, the i7-13700K is actually much better value than the i9 and even tops the Ryzen 9 7900X which is the mid-tier um, Ryzen 9 and you can even go with uh, DDR4 memory and not sacrifice much performance. Next, if you want better overclocking headroom with say the i9 uh, or plan to actually use up all your M.2 slots then do consider the Z790 motherboards. If not, just stick to 6000 series. Like the new Ryzen 7000 series, these CPUs are going to fully utilize any thermal headroom so please don't cheap out on your cooler. Or consider at least a 360mm for the i7 uh, and i7 i9 or you could alternatively lower power limits like we did when we played with 12th gen CPUs. Overall, I would say that coming from 12th gen Intel, this is a good upgrade for both gaming and productivity tasks. And even if you decide to hold out with your last gen CPUs, you can at least still enjoy the benefits of this fierce competition between Team Blue and Red, which means that your next upgrade will actually feel like an upgrade and not a side grade. And that is everything I have to say about the new Intel 13th Gen CPUs. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you find this video helpful, then don't forget to give us a like and share. Subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, in our YouTube if you want to see more content like this. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mobhouse crew. Again, my name is Bang Sawan Shane and I will see you in the next one.